morning. What's happening? Give it a few minutes for YouTube to do its thing. I figured I'm gonna get some training in this morning. Why not have you guys come with me and do a little bit of training this morning? I'll keep it nice and basic for you guys. Let's go. I'm gonna head out into the garden for some training today. Gonna be building a whole new living wall right here. Seated wall over on this side. Got a whole bunch of bunch of stuff to do. There's the collie stage. <laughs> Got my gear today. Do a little bit of some basics. If you got your uh, collie sticks, maybe a training knife or something near you, grab them. Let's do a little bit of training. But I want to make sure I'm clear. Not going to lie. I want to make sure I'm clear up front. I've got some intentions for today's training. My intentions are, number one, to get you moving on some solid basics. So that way, you know that you're training your collie real well when you're training on your own. And number two is uh, to try and persuade you to jump into the collie apex training over at collie center or collie uh, center dot training which is our online school because because the reason why i want to kind of put that out there is because right now i'm doing a uh, a half off access to my entire online school so our original price is 47 dollars a month but i'm doing a uh, i'm doing a special right now that will get you complete access to our online school, everything for just $23 a month. So it's actually a little bit more than half half off. So you get to try it out. And uh, you know, you train it for a couple of months and if you wanna continue, just keep on training. And then you're like, you know, if it's not, I'm not feeling it, then just unsubscribe. But uh, I wanna give you a whole year of a half off to the complete access to all my training programs, all of my courses, all of it, all of it, all right? So maybe today we're training together, that'll, it'll accomplish those two things. Number one, it'll get your basics going, making sure that you're striking well. Maybe I'll answer some of you guys' questions too, some of your training questions, if we get some good training questions today. And number two, get you signed up to Kali Apex. I get so many people asking questions about it. Hey, what's happening? I get so many people that are like, come on, man, I wanna, I wanna get some, some good guidance, some good training, I wanna get past the basics and all that stuff. We got all that over in our online school. Let's see, if you guys are gonna train with me right now, let me know in the comments, where are you training from? I always like to, uh, to know, we got a thumbs up and we got a high bro. That's all we got so far. But I always like to um, see where everybody is watching at because I think it's incredible that we can uh, train together from everywhere in the world. It's about 7 a.m. my time. It's late. It's late. The day is almost three quarters done. Can you, can you believe that? All right, if you got a collie stick, just kind of just kind of mimic what I'm doing. Just kind of go with it. You know, you guys, when you, when you grab your collie stick, let me show you something real quick. To make sure that you're striking the right way, okay? I got, I got my Talibong trainer. I don't even have my Ganunting trainer. I got my Talibong trainer. Uh, but when you are striking your, uh, your Kali, your, your weaponry, you want to make sure, see all the knuckle, the second knuckle line, right? So you got your, your first knuckle line, your second, and then your tertiary. You see your second knuckle line right there. My country's name, America. So you see right there, it's kind of on line with that blade edge edge of the blade second knuckle line all right so when you're training with your stick you want to make sure that you've got that second knuckle line striking forward just like you would be when you are training with the bolo like that see pretty cool right i give you guys a little clue though you know sometimes in kali you hear 
you know, that the body is like, like Kali is a symmetrical system. Like what you can do on one side of the body, you can do on the other side of the body. I'm going to break that myth right now though. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of myth busters here. <laughs> the body is not symmetrical and it is not equal on both sides. Okay. There's a forehand and there's a backhand and there's a, there's reasons for each one of those. But here, this is mind blowing. Knuckle line, blade edge, striking forward. Okay, so when you strike your forehand, in order to get that that blade edge to go straight, you have to cant your wrist. See it? If my wrist is straight, I'm striking way over there somewhere. I'm like going over your shoulder. So I gotta cant my wrist for that thing to come right at you. When I strike my backhand, my wrist has to be straight. And now if I can't my wrist like I did on the forehand, look, now the blade's going like over your shoulder, right? It's got to be straight. So when you strike a forehand, you got to cant the wrist. When you strike a backhand, the wrist has to be straight. Look, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's the three, if it's the four, if it's a horizontal, if it's a horizontal. So right there, I just proved that Kali is not a symmetrical thing that martial arts and the human body are not symmetrical. So what you can do on one side of the body is not how you do it on the other side of the body. Boom, look at that. Look at that, look at that. India, my man, nice. Yeah, probably here in the, in the States, a lot of people are probably sleeping right now. What's today? I don't even know what the day is today. Uh, Thursday, I think it's Thursday, right? Let's see, drill a day, we're on day 68. So yeah, it's Thursday. So yeah, seven o'clock in the morning, my time. Well, a lot of people are probably going to work right now out here. So when you're striking with your stick, you gotta make sure that you're kind of paying attention to that detail, right? When you strike with the forehand, you gotta make sure that your wrist is canted. And when you strike with the backhand, you gotta make sure it's straight. Even if you come out on those horizontals, it's exactly the same thing. Or if you come up on your angle three and then your angle four, verticals right it's all it's all the same right there okay looks like you've got the attention of the indians yeah you from india too that's awesome that's awesome nice nice yeah it might just be because like you know the the time what time is it over there in india well it's, you guys probably got multiple times but what, what time is it over there by you guys Nice. So yeah, it's 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 in the evening, the early evening. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it's in the morning out here. So, like I said, the morning people out here are probably going to be like they're going to have to catch the replay of this, because, uh, yeah, they're probably like going to work and stuff. You guys are done for the day, right? From Italy, two p.m. All right. Good afternoon from Germany. Nice, nice. So today we're just gonna go over a couple of the basics. I'm gonna give you guys some of the basics that we uh, that we train, and I want to show you how those basics transfer to uh, some of the other areas of Kali. So we'll probably take like we'll take a drill and then we'll uh, transfer that over to some of the other areas of Kali, like the Spadia Daga, the double sticks, the uh, the knife. And then make sure you guys, when you get a chance, I got the link down below. Go go uh, click on uh, thekaliapex.com. So that way you can learn more on how you get access to my entire online school at just half price. The entire online school. Everything. Everything I've got on there. I'm going to give it to you guys for 23 bucks a month. The regular price is 47 a month. So if you actually do the math, it's, it's like a little bit over half off. I'm gonna give you that, that special for a whole year of training because I want you guys to train it. Right? I want you guys to get into Apex because I want you guys to experience the difference between like the YouTube channel and, and like our free stuff versus uh, you know what's really going on inside of the training. And if you've never experienced it before, I figure I wanna get you guys, I'm gonna offer a really sweet deal Maybe I'll try to encourage you guys to get in there and try it because it's, it's just a world of difference. It's a world of difference. And if you're uh, serious about your collie and you want to get that, th get that collie moving, then I want to do whatever I can to get you into the Apex program 
and get you into our training. Love your stuff. Definitely getting some of your online training shortly. Nice. My boys love their sticks. Good, good. That's right. Everybody should be training Kali. Remember, you're never too young and you're never too old to start training Kali, right? No such thing as too old or too young. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So uh, let's see. I don't know. Maybe we'll do some different drills or something like that. I don't know. I don't really have a plan. I figure we'll just kind of get moving and training and stuff. Um, there's a question that I actually did get from one of the sponsors on our channel that I meant to respond to uh, earlier this morning in, in the as a reply to the comments. Um, but it's a pretty good question, and uh, it actually happens happens often, especially in the very beginning of your collie. And he was talking about, you know, when I'm training, I'm getting these uh, friction blisters. Well, all blisters are caused by friction. And uh, there, there's a couple reasons why that happens, okay? Number one is that it could be because uh, your grip isn't strengthened enough. So when, you, when you're swinging your stick or, you know, you just don't have the right mechanics and you're getting this action going on. So you have a lot of rubbing that's going on. The stick is rubbing in the hand. So you're gonna get a lot of the webbing uh, blisters and stuff like that, okay? Because when you're swinging, the stick is wibbling, wobbling around like that in your hand. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is that you actually might not be grabbing this, uh, gripping the stick right. And you might be gripping the stick like this instead of gripping it like this, which puts a better bite into the grip and I'll show you that here in more detail in a second the third reason why or at least the top third reason why you might be getting those friction blisters is because uh, the if you're training with a different shape or a different thickness stick than what you're used to then it might be rubbing uh, on a different part of your hand or it might be rubbing slightly on your, on your hand slightly differently than what your hand is adapted to um, so like right now, like if I, if I go down to a thinner stick, like I like training with sticks that are about seven eighths of an inch. You'd have to put that in the converter for how many centimeters that is. Um, but if I go down to like three quarter inch, um, or, or I mean, I'm sorry, if I go down, yeah, if I go down to three quarter inch, um, I'll get a couple little friction blisters because it's thinner than what I'm used to. Right. So sometimes that happens too. So that's kind of the main reasons why uh, those friction blisters happen. Those blisters will happen is that number one, uh, the weapon is moving around in the hand, right? It's kind of like doing this because uh, either your mechanics are not correct or uh, your grip is just not quite there yet to keep it, you know, secured firm in the hand. Number two is that you're not gripping the stick properly. So, and that's what's causing more space in your uh, in the grip of the stick so it's more wiggle and number three might just be trained with a different size stick that you're not used to and number four is that you're you know the, the hand just needs to toughen up okay uh, because a after a while after a while um you know you don't get those anymore because they turn into calluses so if you get those blisters if you do get those blisters uh, my advice is uh, make sure that you keep them clean but when you are not training do not keep them bandaged. They need to be exposed to the air to heal faster. Okay, oxygen heals the body. Okay, <laughs> so um, make sure that you, uh, you know, if you had your hand taped up or something for training, uh, untape it. Don't put band aids on it or anything like that. Leave it, leave them exposed to the air, uh, you know, for the day or overnight or whatever, and just make sure you, you keep them clean, obviously, so they don't get infected or anything. But then they'll uh, they'll heal up quicker, and then you'll you'll form into calluses faster. You don't want them to heal all the way, though. You want to make sure you're getting back into the training, right? And you want to train, so that way you are demanding that part of the body to toughen up. So if you look at like like if you look at my hands, right? I've got calluses all over my hands, right? I've got the roll of calluses here. I got a roll of calluses here. I got calluses there, on you know, the thumb, on the the pinkies, all calloused. So there's you know, that's just what happens. Okay. That's what happens. So just kind of little thing right there. Oh, the grip. I was going to show you guys the grip. So a lot of times when people grip a, grab a stick, they put it in the webbing of the hand like this, and then they put their fingers around it. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of space in between of your hand and your stick when you do that, because the stick is round 
And when you, when you close your hand like this, what you're gonna notice is that it's not round, right? There's, it's like, it's like a pentagram. There's, there's five sides to it when you close your hand, right? So you have this round rattan stick and you're going like this to form your hand around, but when you close your hand, there's five sides, right? It's like, it's like putting a circle inside of a, uh, inside of a square, right? And you're always gonna have the corners are not gonna be fused to the circle, right? So the circle can just spin around inside of the square. And that's kind of the same exact uh, principle that's going on when you, when you just kind of grab the stick like that. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna bring it into right where that first and second knuckle line is. So right in here. And then that's where we want to kind of roll it more into the grip. And now you got more gripping surface on your hand. Plus that's going to put the blade edge going forward, right? The second knuckle line, as opposed to if I do this, see the difference. And then I have to like cant it out like a whole lot. See, if you do this, if you put it in that little hook like that and then grip it, kind of roll it, like put your hand into it and pull your fingers back. See, now it's all like, it's there. So after a while, then you just start kind of like grabbing the stick like that. You know, you don't have to sit there and like do that anymore, <laughs> you know? So just, just a little something because, you know, that's why uh, like these bolos, well, hang on, I got my top Prado with me. Everyone's trying to mimic these handles. You know, but that, that's why these aren't round. That's why they're, they're shaped you know, certain, a certain way is because then it, it eliminates that, that openness, right? You get more surface area on your hand to your grip. And uh, that's why these things just stay in your hand real good. All right. So let's go ahead and... Uh... <laughs> Eating breakfast, nice. I had breakfast. Breakfast is, uh, they say, the most important meal of the day, right? I'm 53. They are 17 and 19. Nice. Good. Good. That means they got more time to get better than you, right? <laughs> is FCS, Kali, and Pontugan good for military use? I want to learn them, and I'm joining the Army soon. Uh... Well, the army's going to teach you probably different stuff. Where are you from? I don't know. I don't know which army you're you're joining. Where, where are you from? If you're in the Philippines joining like like the Force Recon Marines, you're not going to be learning FCS, Kali. Uh, let's see here. But you know, learn learn whatever, man. Like learn learn what interests you. Yo, what's up, David? Can't wait for school to end so I can catch up with my friends and practice some partner training and sparring. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and again, learning something further. Thanks. Thanks for teaching us. Yeah, man, absolutely. All right, so I'm going to get warmed up here. Um, one of the best warm-ups is just to kind of get your wrists rotating like this. One of the best things you can do. Okay. Again, you got that full grip. You're not opening the hand or anything like that. You want the full grip of the stick. Elbow is close to the body. The hand is about roughly in line with the shoulder. So that way you got full rotation in the wrist. So if you start going low like this, you start losing the rotation in the wrist. You want to bring this up. Okay, plus these are these later on become strikes too. There's there's some tactical application to these things. Let me adjust this. There are some tactical applications to this stuff. Okay. And then you just tuck it. You can work the other side if you want to. Get the other side moving. Yeah, and then go forward and back. Right there. Swing a couple ones and twos. All 
right there. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I mean, I can't quite get the camera right. That's all it takes. And then you can also switch it, get the other side going. Boom, right there. Get some florettes going. A couple of batiks going. Let's get the body moving. Boom, right there. Now my wrists are ready to go. My grip, my wrists. <clears throat> uh, the length of stick that I use is about 28 inches. <laughs> I just gotta just go over some like, like basic information. And then if you wanna go deeper and go like understand the tactics and how everything is used, then jump into Kali Apex, all right? All right, so uh, there's three angles of attack, right? Let's kind of, just kind of go over like like some of the, the basic fundamentals, principles, okay? Yep. So something that, that we like to do here at Kali Center is that we don't we don't use the word concept, okay? We, we teach based off of principles, right? Principles are the fundamental truths that build a system. Concept, if you look up the word concept, the definition, is general notion, abstract idea. Um, so that might be why everybody's trying to figure out how to use their concepts because <laughs> it's all general notions and abstract ideas. Um, working off of principles, like being able to identify principles, which are fundamental truths, um, those are gonna actually lead you somewhere. Okay, they're, they're gonna take you down somewhere. Instead of inventing things, you're going to discover things. Okay, and that's very different. So there's uh, there's three angles of striking, okay, regardless of the tactic. You have diagonal strikes, okay, on the forehand side and on the backhand side. Okay, that's our angle one and our angle two. Our angle three comes up the X and our angle four goes up the X. Okay, that's your diagonal strikes. Then you have your horizontal strikes. Forehand horizontal, backhand horizontal. Okay, you can strike this on the high line, you can strike this on the midline to the elbows, and you can strike this on the low line to the knees. And then the third angle of strikes is vertical strikes. You got vertical strikes on the forehand side, and then you got vertical strikes on the backhand side. And they can also come up, and they can come up. Okay? But that's all there is. There's only three angles of attack because we live in the third dimension, okay? So there is a y-axis, a z, and an x. That's it. That's it. There's not a fourth angle, right? At least not in the third dimension. So uh, even though a lot of styles will teach based off of like, you know, an angle one, an angle two, an angle three, an angle four, an angle five, an angle six, an angle seven, an angle eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 25, 15 million. And they'll keep like, you know, they'll have this crazy, crazy numbering system and they call it angles of attack. Um, these are just the, the way the different, the weapon can come in at different lines within the three angles, okay? Diagonals, horizontals, and verticals. So the reason why we keep it very simple is because if something is roughly 45 degrees, okay, even if it's like 40 degrees or 50 degrees or you know, 38 degrees, somewhere within that line, like 38 to about 62, 63 degrees, in the heat of the moment, when somebody is striking at you, uh, you're going to register that as a diagonal, okay? That's how you're gonna register it. 
if it starts to flatten out, once it hits that degree where it starts to flatten out, like right about here, now you're going to viscerally register that strike as a horizontal. So even if this thing's at like 25 degrees, you're not going to register this. You're not going to like, you know, in the heat of the moment, be like, oh, that's a 25 degree angled strike. You're going to say that's a horizontal. Okay. And then same thing on the vertical. Okay? If it's not somewhere close between about 15 degrees, right? And then zero. And then what is that? 345 degrees. Um, then, you know, if it's somewhere in between there, you're going to register it as a vertical strike. When you're in your adrenal visceral state, like when you're sparring it out, when you're fighting it out, that's what you're going to register. You're going to register that the strike is either diagonal, horizontal, or vertical. Okay, So that's why there's, there's only three angles. There's only three angles. Now, out of those three angles, the diagonal strikes, these are kind of like the mother strikes. Because the diagonal holds the most amount of leverage. And it also holds the most amount of surface area through the angle, through the arc, through the strike. So what that means is that when you're close, when you're in what's called corto range, diagonals can defeat diagonals or at least cancel them out. Diagonals will defeat horizontals because they'll have more leverage. And diagonals will also defeat verticals because, again, they have more leverage. Okay, so you, it's kind of learning, you know, when do we use the horizontals and the verticals versus the diagonals, right? And um, yeah, so there's places for those. I teach that all on the Kali Apex, uh, but I just wanna kinda give you guys some of the basic stuff. So one of the good drills to do is just start striking your one, your two, your horizontal, your horizontal, strike your vertical down, and then strike your vertical up and then strike your vertical down on the backhand and then strike your vertical up on your backhand right there. Let me kind of move this so I can show you a little bit better so you can see what's going on at the bottom. Okay. So then you're kind of getting all your angles. Let me kind of finish it out for you. So you got your one, your two, you can come up your angle three and then up your angle four as well. So now you hit all those diagonals, come across on the forehand horizontal come across on the backhand horizontal, and then come down on that vertical forehand, and then come up on the vertical forehand, and then come down on the vertical backhand, and then come up on the vertical backhand, okay? And then that way you've got it. Man, I can't quite get this thing right. But then you have all of your diagonal, horizontal, and vertical angles, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine ten right there and that brings you back to the beginning right, and then you can start to mix these up pretty much whatever order you want okay because it's not really important about the order of it it's just understanding the principle of the angles okay so that's one of the one of the things you can do now there are a couple drills you can do that will separate each one of those angles okay so we can do our basic diagonal strikes so one two three and four. So we can just kind of take like a minute here and just work that out. And if you want to get really detailed on the striking mechanics, all the principles that we teach, we teach a set of 12 striking mechanic principles to build your strikes. Again, jump into Kali Apex. Go to KaliApex.com and then you get access to my entire online school for half off for an entire year. And it's a month-by-month -month thing. Of course, you can unsubscribe from it anytime you want. I don't know why you would. Just complete it. Just finish the training, right? Because it's, it's going to help you out tremendously. And then if you're training with anybody, if you've got a training partner, uh, you know, you got a buddy, your kids are training with you, then you got training partners. So then you got some good guidance on what to do with your uh, with your kids, with your training partners, and everybody can get really, really good. We actually have a lot of people uh, that are doing that. They're training with their kids, and they're using our, our program over at Kali Apex, and that's their, uh, that's their instruction. And they'll send us videos and stuff like that of their training, and it's awesome to see everybody's making really good progress. All right, so one, two, three, four. 
Okay. So that's one, that's one drill that works on your uh, diagonal strikes. Then we have a drill that will work on your horizontal and your vertical strikes at the same time. So we have, we call this the plus. You strike horizontal and then vertical. Horizontal and vertical. Right there. And you can get creative with it because then you can strike right to the elbow line, which is the midline. You can strike down to the knee line as well. You can start with the vertical and then go into the horizontal. Doesn't matter. It's the same. It's going to be the same thing. Okay, you can also strike two verticals and then horizontal. So you can start working that principle of redondo, which just means to repeat. Okay. Redondo is not necessarily a, uh, you know, a particular tactic. It just means to repeat. It means over and over again. That's Redondo. Kevin Williams, welcome. He just became a level two sponsor to the channel. Thank you so much. Welcome. Got lots of really good training over there for you. Shorter sticks are harder to do than hand transfers. Yep, this means you got to practice more, right? In a lockdown right now, so we'll be a couple months before I could get longer ones made. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Train with what you got, man. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Jose says, love this channel. Paul's a good trainer. Thank you. There, see, everyone's giving you, giving you, giving you hints. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. We're coming together, man. We're coming together. We're here for you. We're here for you. All right, so that's what you got. So then you can start combining these two drills, right? You got one, two, three, four, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and vertical. And now you're working all your angles of attack. Your diagonal strikes downward, diagonal strikes upward, forehand horizontals, backhand verticals, backhand horizontals, and forehand verticals right there. All right, and then just work that drill. And one of the things I like to do is just kind of take a second or take a minute or two and just work the drill in a stagnant way. Okay. And then I like to progress this into a little bit of movement. Here. Just kind of add in a little bit of footwork. You can kind of start freelancing between them. You know, then it doesn't really matter anymore. And then you can kind of start playing it around. Right there. So just off of those two drills right there, you could have a whole training routine like that, just off of those two simple drills. All right, our X drill, our diagonal drill, and then our plus drill working in the other two angles of strikes, horizontals and verticals. If you have something that you can use, like a visual like this, like a pole, a tree, uh, don't make impact to it. Just use it as a visual reference for your angles. Okay, so that way now you can see the precision a lot more on where your angles are. Then, then, we gotta work some follow through strikes. Uh oh, someone changed the position of Bob. See, this is what's nice about the camera is because I could just move you guys around. See, if we were in a class together right now, you would have to move to me. But because we're able to do it this way, I can move you with me. So, okay, one of the things that I like doing when I'm training with Bob is I can see one of, one of the kids were out here beating him up. Uh, I angle him, okay? I'll put him in a bladed position because, right, that's a lot of times that's what we're sparring with. So I put him in a bladed position. When we go into impact training, okay, so first train in the air so that way you are working on your mechanic development. I want you not to start off hitting something. 
because if you start off making impact with something, you're going to focus more on hitting the object than the precision and the coordination and precision of the mechanic. So focus on the coordination first. Don't hit anything. Okay, just strike in the air nice and slow. Then use something that's a visual reference that you're not going to make contact with, which you can still use Bob right here. I don't have to hit Bob. All right, but now you can see how precise your angles are. Your diagonals, which you want those to be on 45 degrees as best as possible, because that's going to be the most leverage. Your horizontals and your vertical strikes. Okay, Then we can go into impact training. The purpose of impact training is not developing power. Okay, I know a lot of people say it that way. A lot of people are like, you're going to you strike tighter so you have good power power and that's not true the power comes from the development of the mechanics of the strike so the power doesn't come from the impact from this the impact of hitting the object the power comes from what you can generate with your body okay not from the actual hitting of something when we start training impact training what we are developing is the follow-through of the strike and the return of the weapon through resistance. So we already need to bring power to the impact training so we can follow through and get the weapon to return to the next position, whether we're going fluid, whether we're going broken, or we're going circular like that. So you already have to bring power into your impact training. Now, the more that you're training between those three, air training, nothing in front of you, visual structure in front of you, and impact training, you're, you're getting more powerful because you're getting more rep time in developing the mechanics, your striking mechanics. That's why you are increasing speed and power, not because you're actually hitting anything. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Sponsor, like when I go live and stuff like that, they get the replays. Um, got a lot of stuff that's coming up. They get uh, different, um, kind of different behind the scenes stuff. They get access to a few different videos. Um, there, there's some videos that I, I make only accessible for level two sponsors. Uh, they get different uh, discounts. They usually get bigger discounts to some stuff. Um, you know, so they, they just they get a few more extra perks. Bobby, Dirty Bob right there, Dirty Bob. Who could thumbs down? Oh, dude, I got haters, man. People hating on Kali Center, man. But you guys, if I don't have haters, then I'm not doing something right, right? Someone is literally giving free education. Shame on whoever disliked. That's okay. Some people dislike education. <laughs> Some people don't like me because uh, I, I had a guy that was like, I don't support anything Collie Center because he did a video with Jake Mace many, many years ago. People just find a reason, dude. Who cares? But what's, what's interesting is the way that YouTube algorithm works is that he, they, those people that do a thumbs down actually help the algorithm out because YouTube doesn't like 100% scores on channels and on videos they like a, a contrast like that so when someone thumbs down it though when you get that one or two or four thumbs down versus like hundreds of thumbs down uh, thumbs ups it actually improves the algorithm for the video so i don't mind having a couple of those guys out there mechanics 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 yes I want more double stick drills. You don't always get what you want in life. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably do some double stick stuff too, man. I'm going to be training for a little while. I'm going to do a little bit of stuff here for you guys. But here's the deal. If I'm going to give you more double stick stuff, you got to go over to KaliApex.com and go get access to my entire online school for half off and spend at least three months in there. Come on and get some real training with me. Because that's where you're really going to get the double stick stuff, not here free on YouTube. If you guys want to get crazy, crazy training with me, got to get into Kali Apex, my friends. 
And I'm giving you that half off deal. Half off, you can't beat that for an entire year's worth of training, access to everything I put out there. Which, by the way, I've got more videos uh, in our programs than I do here for free on YouTube, just so you know. So when you run out of the 750 free videos that I have here, I've got another 1,400 videos inside of our training programs. <laughs> uh, wish you get half off for it if you're not too late because I do have a limited number of people that I'm giving it to you to. Can you make a video about the difference between Dose Paris, Balinta Walk, Bikini, Tertia, the things you do and what Dog Brothers do? No, I don't want to make that video. You just, you got to do your own research and, uh, and um, decipher that for yourself. That's not a video I want to make. <laughs> Brian says he loves my vibe. I hope so. This is the vibe of love. Kali love. <laughs> Lake Shasta. Shasta. Did I say that right? But I am very, very poor. Well, then you gotta, you gotta come, you gotta find a solution to that. Go, go wash some cars or something. You gotta find a solution for that. Don't just, don't just sit there and accept that. You gotta find something. Find something that you can do. That can help you. You gotta help yourself here. I used to be very poor too. <laughs> That's cool. I just joined this stream. That's cool. You actually want thumbs down? What a crazy world we live in. You can't appreciate people straight up. Yeah, that's just, that's the world of YouTube and social media, man. They want to fight. They want to promote fighting. They say, don't promote violence on our videos, but yet they, the algorithm, they want thumbs down and stuff like that. But that's okay. Yeah, it's kind of weird though, isn't it? Isn't it? It's really weird. Thanks again for putting these up. I've helped my, you've helped my colleague game immensely. We'll join APAC soon for sure. Yes, and please join it while I've got that half off access to my entire online school over at colleagueapex.com. I got the link in the description if you guys want to check it out. All right, so then we go into that impact training, right? So we have one, two, right there, or we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I like using Bob because I have that visual reference. So you can start working more of your accuracy training as well. So especially like on those horizontals, you can strike the neck right there. You can strike right across the eyes right there. Same thing on the backhand, right? You can strike the neck, remove the head. You can strike right through the eyes, boom, right there. And that works too. And then uh, on the vertical strikes, you have two basic targets, right? You can strike the collarbone or right to the crown of the head, okay? Same thing on the other side. Strike the collarbone or crown of the head. Okay? And then you have uh, the diagonals, right? I can strike through the neck. I can strike right through the bridge of the face, going right there. And same thing on the two. Strike through the neck, strike right there. I actually missed the neck. I hit the collarbone, so let me redo that. Okay, so then you can, uh, you know, strike them all. I don't have knees on this guy, but you can strike to the knee. You can strike all the way up to the chin on your angle three, on your angle four, boom, right there. You can strike up coming underneath the lat, boom, right there, which isn't really, you don't do that too often. Another area that you can go after is the shoulder, Bop, right there. That's another immobilizing part of the body to strike, all right? So uh, you can do that too looking to do any kind of damage to that shoulder to take that thing out. Um, basically, when you are striking, you're looking for computer system or you're looking for joints. That's really what you're looking for because you're, you're, you're really looking to destroy the function. If you're looking for the arm, you want to bust the hand or take the hand off at the wrist, hand, all these different, all these joints. Elbow is very good, break the joint. Shoulder is good, especially that collarbone, break the joint. That's what we're looking to achieve when we strike those areas. Bop, right there. 
okay? But you know, you can start working that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, right there. Right there. So you can bring that into your impact training. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. So that's your three, three different methods for your solo training that to improve your mechanics while working on the three angles. There are three angles. I use dead tree. Yeah, that works too. Anything, anything. You use tire stack, you use dead tree. You can put a four by four pole in the ground and wrap it if you want to, wrap it with something if you want, or just strike it like that. Eventually you'll probably have to replace it. Uh, you can use a, a stack of tires. I got my other tire stacks over there. So anything that you can hit, and you should hit different things because it, it's a good idea. Okay? It's just good to, uh, to have different things So um, to strike. And then from time to time, when you can spar, then you're doing some impact training on people. <laughs> Hopefully they're your friends though, right? You're, only hit your friends. <laughs> In martial arts... Martial arts is the only time and the only place in the world that, that you can say, be sure to hit your friends. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Let's see what we got. Loving heaven six and staff drills. Nice. Working the groundwork and putting it together. Florian, Florian says he loves the way I explain things. I love sticks. I need a friend like Bob. Bob is a great training partner. Mine break in my hands, though. What does? Yeah, the apex, man. Yeah, if you think, if you think that I explain things well for free on YouTube, get into Kali Apex, because... Goes deep, goes deep. CJ says, I learned more from this guy. Does your palms get hurt or bleed when you play with those sticks? No, no, they don't. Because my palms regularly bleed and little skin comes off when I do double six. Yeah, because you're probably you, you got like blisters. Yeah, that's just blisters. Um, yeah, you'll have to catch the replay and go into the beginning and uh, show you a callus. Like my hands are all roughed up, man. They don't they don't do that anymore. They don't open up anymore. Like if you touch my hands, they're all those spots. They're all calloused up. I've been training this stuff for a long time, my friends. Long time. Oh, your sticks break. Oh man, you need you need you need better sticks. You gotta go to collicenter.com or go to go to our new our new gear store at trigonalgear.com and go order yourself a pair of good sticks. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Oh, what is this? What's he got? What? Two sticks? You can't do that. If I was Goro from Mortal Kombat, imagine that. Imagine that. If I was Goro, I had four arms. Wouldn't that be something? How are you doing today? I'm doing well because I'm training Kali. Sun's out. I'm training Kali. The garden's doing well. Couldn't ask for a better day. Where is the discount code? Can't find it. So uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and give it to you. It is Apex Starter. One word. Uh, if you go to kaliapex.com, then you'll see uh, you'll see where I have that posted, and then you can just click. It'll take you over to the uh, the sign up page, and then when you check out, just enter that code, Apex Starter, 
and then it'll uh, kick you into that half off. And uh, when you guys get that, it's access to my entire online school. So all of my programs, all of my, uh, all the single courses, you get Kali Apex, the basic training course, you get access to the Apex Continuum training library, you get access to the Kali Athletics training, which is really good for flexibility development and your mobility and all that. Um, so it, uh, Tom does a really good job at targeting like the hips and the hamstrings and the knees and the shoulders and the side and making sure that you're getting nice and limber for your collie, which is going to help increase your speed, which when you increase your speed, it's going to help to increase your power because you got more momentum, right, that you can generate. And then uh, you're also going to get our knife fighting course, our collie starter, collie yoga, ITC 2017, ITC 2019. All right, you get the whole gamut of everything that we have. Plus, you're gonna get all new videos that I put up throughout the year as well because we got a lot of new stuff that we're putting up. So you'll have access to everything at half the price, which is only $23 a month versus our regular $47 a month. And I'm giving it to you for 12 months at that price for 12 months. So you can just try it out. And then when, when the 12 months is up, if you want to, you can just kind of let it go. Um, you know, and then remember, you can always contact me and be like, hey, man, I really like this stuff and I want to keep going and I can't afford the $47 a month. And then maybe I'll keep you in at the 23. We'll see when the time comes, but you got to You got to get in there first. Hope you remember sunscreen. Yeah, out here, I'm not. Uh, it looks worse than it is because of the camera, because the sun is peeking over this tree right now. I don't get burned out here, though, anymore. My body's pretty used to the sun. I'm outside all the time, all day long. Now, when I go to ITC next week, I'll have the sunscreen there because it's a different elevation, different exposure to sun, and, and I'll get burned over there. So, But at home, I don't, I don't get burned up anymore. The other day was full-out blast sun, 100-plus degrees. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, let's do a let's do a little bit of basic stuff on some uh, on some double some doble, some doble espata, doble calice, doble baston, doble olisi, doble stick, whatever you want to call it, whatever you would like to call it. Heaven six, let's do that. Someone mentioned heaven six, let's do this. I want to. Uh, I've done a few videos on it, and uh, I want to give you guys some pointers, and it's going to help kind of clean some stuff up for you guys a little bit. Hopefully, maybe a little bit. So we got heaven six right here, okay? Make sure that you are training your single weapon in your right hand, and then you are training your single weapon in your left hand, okay? And then you gotta go through the different uh, basic mechanics, the basic manipulations of the strikes, which is striking off of your shoulder, slashing off your shoulder, slashing off your elbow, and then slashing off your wrist. Which, if you are a sponsor to the channel, then you have seen yesterday's drill a day where I go into the into those three uh, basic manipulations of slashing for our drill a day for yesterday's drill. Drill a day is still going on, my friends. Still going on. We got two more days tomorrow and Saturday, and then it'll be the end of week ten. All right. So make sure you're doing that because you want to have you do want to have good mechanics when you're starting to get into the doble. So. The, the, the double sticks, it's kind of like an oxymoron, okay? Meaning it doesn't really make any sense because I have two long weapons, but, but, this is actually considered in the short weapon category. The reason why, even though I got two long weapons, the reason why it is considered in the short weapon category is because of the limited uh, amount of manipulations that you can do. Okay, so it just kind of shortens up what you can do as far as, you know, with your, uh, with your double sticks. Because when you have one stick that's extended, right, the other one has to be tucked. So you shorten that other one a little bit. And you can't quite, you know, when I'm on a single stick, I can get this thing all the way around. You can't quite do that when you have the double stick because this hand is stuck on the other side. So you're fighting your torso right there. So that's why even though I got two long weapons, the double sword double stick is, is actually considered a short weapon category again not because of the length of weapons because of the manipulation so when you are looking at like 
a long weapon category versus short weapon category, it has nothing to do with the length of the weapon. It has to do with how the body can manipulate. Let me change this because the, the sun is getting strong now. It's kind of blotting stuff out. Let me come on this side. It might be a little shadowy, but it won't be, uh, it won't be glary and whited out. Okay, so um, that's just a little, a little extra right there. Okay, so again, long weapon, short weapon has nothing to do with the length of the weapon. It's how the body manipulates it. Okay, the body either manipulates it long or it manipulates it short. Okay, because the body gets cut off when it's short. All right, so heaven six right here. Bop. So a lot of times when people train heaven six, they swing through and then they hit this two and then they hit this two, right? And then they swing through and they go like this. On the heaven six, what you really want to be doing is you want to hit what's called a V strike up on top. So you want to strike this and pull it back like this. Instead of striking all the way through, which overturns your body, and then it brings your left hand out. See, this is too low because it's not protecting my head, right? It's not, I'm not able to project the weapon forward. So I'm actually not doing anything with that strike. It just becomes like a, a bypassing movement of the stick, right? Which is no good. So when we strike upper eight, see, now I can get this thing out there in front of me, and I can get extension on that strike. So let me show you again. If I strike like this, see how this, this bottom hand, this left hand is... It's too low, it's too short, it's not doing anything. And then I come through like that, right? See, there's nothing there. So if I go into my upper eight, see now I can really get that left hand extended and then strike like that, right? I can get this bottom hand because I go upper eight. See, now it can trace out, trace along the angle that my tricep creates. And now I can get that weapon up and protect my head while I'm getting that strike in. Bop, and then it's right there. Okay, so that's really how you want to be striking your heaven six. You don't want to swing this through necessarily where you're losing the mechanic of that bottom hand. You want to upper eight that thing so that way you keep that mechanic of that other hand. In the beginning, people are going to be like, yeah, but Paul, I don't have so much power. I don't have power. My strike's too weak. Like, well, that's because you're too weak. <laughs> oh, burn. No, but that's because you got to develop the mechanics. How do you develop the mechanics? Not on the double stick. You develop the mechanics by starting over from the top and then working the drills of those manipulations. All right. And then you get in, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. Right. So you got to do some training, my friends. What's the difference between training and practice? Let's see if somebody can uh, answer that in the comments. What is the difference between training and practice? Let's see who's got that. Let's see what we got. How old were you when you started? When I started martial arts or when I started Kali? When I started martial arts, I was like six years old. When I started Kali, I was 15. But, but my, my first teachers didn't call it Kali. They, they called it Eskrima. Yeah, go grab those sticks. What was my first stick? So my first, well, my first training, we actually focused on knife. I started on the knife. And uh, I've shown it a few times on, my, on Instagram, on my Instagram stories. And it's, uh, it was a hickory, it was cut down from a hickory ore. It was a 12-inch little stick that was cut down from a, from a hickory ore, like a, a boat paddle ore. That was, that was my first stick. And we were doing knife training stuff. Dude, you want everything, man. Be, be grateful for what you're getting right now. I can't give you everything. I'm on an hour already. I'm going to be getting out of here soon. So I could do my training training. Let's smash another light bulb in the lounge. <laughs> yeah, that, a lot of times, like if you, if you start hitting the ceiling, your fans, all that, that's, that's from the angle four. That means you got to get a little lower. Of environmental awareness, my friends. Nice. Yeah, definitely keep me posted on your training progress. I already answered that question. Yeah. 
If you have a dire question that you want me to answer, you can put it as a super chat. <laughs> Absolutely, Mike. My video, awesome content. Your videos have inspired me to get back into active FMA training after many years. Thank you for that. Love the drills. Feels good getting back into the groove again. Yeah, I'm glad I can do whatever I can to help you out, my friend. Training is about health, practice, and, oh, training is about health, practice is about technique. Almost. See, now everybody's, everyone's going to have a different idea of what that is, and then I'm going to share what the Kali Center idea is of training versus practice. What's your first martial art? It was, it was called Budo. So, okay, so it changed names. It was in the park district of my hometown. When I was growing up, I was six years old. It was first called Budo Aikido, and then they changed the name to Budo Taijutsu. I still have the old uniform. I got I got to pass through Chicago before ITC. So if I can remember, I'll try to go through. I'll find my old bag, and then I'll uh, I'll try to I'll try to take some pictures and put it up on my YouTube stories and my Instagram stories of like my old Budo Taijutsu uniform and my old Taekwondo belts and stuff like that. I'll try to I'll see if I can find that stuff and put some put some photos up on the stories you guys you know you guys know i do like uh there's youtube stories and stuff right like you can there's more stuff i do on youtube than just these videos like make sure you're, you're checking out the community page uh make sure you check out the youtube stories it's like there's there's a lot of cool stuff going on you sell any metal training yes we are working on the development of our training bolos and, and, our, our, and all that stuff right now. And all that's going to be over at trigonalgear.com. So we are uh, in the process of, of the actually all being made. We're just, the handles are getting finished up right now. So we've, uh, we've went through, um, like the ones that I have, these are prototypes. This is, this is the prototype polybong. And then the ones that you see me use, the light handled ones, the ones you see me, the other one, the Gnunting and stuff that you see me use in a lot of my other videos, these are the prototypes. Um, so we had to, we couldn't just launch these ones out because the balance wasn't quite right. So now that we're getting them, um, now they're all worked out, the kinks are worked out, they're in production right now. And uh, yeah, they'll be arriving to trigonalgear.com very, very soon, along with our training bags, our sticks, We've got sparring knives, training knives, sparring knives coming out. We got a whole bunch of really good stuff. So we got socks on the way because, you know, people like if you train the way we do with your footwork and stuff, you want some good socks and everything too from time to time. So we got all kinds of good training gear and all the training gear is designed by us. This is not, uh, you know, we're not like going, f trying to find a guy that stamps out blades. Like we have an actual blade smith in the Philippines that is making our trainers to our specifications and if uh we also have quality control so we have a team out in philippines um that trains kali uh they are they used to be uh philippine marines they spent years in the battlefield they have used kali in war so they know what a real good bolo feels like uh and uh, they're on our team out there to help us with quality assurance and uh, so any blade that they will handle, if it's the balance isn't right, then it gets rejected. So we have uh, so these are going to be coming very soon to our to our online store. So you'll be able to get them anywhere around the world. Or Instagram. Yeah, just go to just at Kali Center.
Training is learning from master and practice is do what you have learned. How much are my nunchucks going for? We don't sell nunchucks. So nice videos, really helping MMA artists. I'm, I'm glad to be able to help you out. <laughs> you already know what to ask for for your birthday. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's what I'm here to do. Train and, and help you guys out, answer your questions. But you got to do me a favor, and you got to go to KaliApex.com. You got to join my online school because, again, you can get half off access, the entire, access everything at my online school. There's like over a thousand videos over there. There's only like 750 videos for free here on YouTube. And actually a lot of them are private. <laughs> you, like, you can't get access to anymore. The really, really crazy good ones. Nope, I am in a, I'm in a different forest in, in the different part of the world. I love the 18 inch Prado nunting that my family gave me for my birthday this year. Awesome. Do you have any katana swords for sale? Hey Mike, this is a Kali school, man. We don't we don't do uh, Japanese martial arts. We do Filipino martial arts. So we don't we do not do any kind of Japanese weaponry. That is not my field of expertise. I stay in my lane in the world of my stuff. So uh, this is all Kali, all Filipino. So we have Filipino fighting sticks. We have bolos from the Philippines. Uh, that's that's what we do here. We do not do Japanese arts. We don't do Chinese martial arts. We don't do Korean martial arts. We do all Filipino martial arts. Kali Eskrima Arnis. That's what we do. Um, long stick videos, uh, like staff videos and two-handed fighting methods. Yeah, they're up here on, on the channel. Uh, I've got more that I'm going to be putting up on... Uh, on the Kali Apex. Oh, so I'll give you guys my answer real quick. Go ahead, buddy, show some moves. You use a bow staff. Are you guys like new to the channel? Is this your first? Is this your first time seeing a Kali Center video? <laughs> All right. Um, difference between training and practice. This is how this is how we look at it here at Kali Center. Training is to demand a higher level of performance. Okay, that's what training is. So when we when we look at when we're training. Okay, that's what we're looking at, is to demand a higher level of performance. Practice is to maintain the level at which you are at. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we're going to get new people because, you know, YouTube does that, right? Like, they shoot off stuff to new people. Um... So yeah, go go check out go check out um, all my go check out the channel. There is a search bar that you can use that's on the channel. So when you go to the Kali Center channel, you'll see that little lens right there, and then you can click on that, and it'll open up a search bar. What that does is it it allows you to type something in, and it searches only the videos within my channel instead of going to the main like the main YouTube homepage and then using the search on top. Of YouTube which then searches entirety of YouTube go to the channel and then use the search bar that's in the channel and that's gonna just search through the videos here on the channel so we do have a lot of staff drills we got spear drills Kali so there's there's a lot of there's like we call the 12 areas of Kali and uh, so Kali is based off of well it is a blade fighting system and we have the single sword we have the double sword now, let me show you guys a few more things for my new guy all 
All right, so um, in Kali, I'll, I'll give you guys a little, uh, since you're new, I was gonna jump off of here, but I'll, I'll kind of, I'll answer some of your questions for the, for the new people. Darn, my, my staff is over, is at the house, is like over there right now. So this is Kali. Kali is a blade fighting system. Okay, not not all not all uh, Kali is the same though. Okay, so you know we we teach our our brand of Kali, and there's a lot of different brands of Kali. So we, we teach our brand of Kali here, but this is what it's all based off of is the blade. Okay, this is called a bolo. In in Filipino terms, this is a bolo. Bolo is just a generic term for like machete or sword. Okay, and uh, kind of like the Romans right, during the Roman Empire, they used the term gladius. Gladius back then in Rome during the Roman Empire, yes, there was the gladius sword, but when the Romans used the term gladius, it it was just the word for sword. Okay, so for us, we used the term bolo. There's different shapes of bolo. Okay, this is called a genunting. Okay, this is a top prado blade. This is what's used by the Philippine Force Recon Marines. They, they take these with them when they go to war in southern Philippines against the terrorists and stuff like that. They, they bring this because they do get into close quarter engagement bolo, with, with their bolos. So this is called a genunting. It means half scissors. And this is another shape bolo called a palibong. Okay. So there's there's a lot of different shape bolos. Each tribe, each member of tribe kind of had their own personal taste, their own preference, right? Their own style. So they would have a bolo kind of made for that that style, right? So uh yeah, so we have different areas of Kali. You have the single sword, okay? And we use what's called rattan. We have rattan sticks. This is our training tool for this. Okay? So this one is a real blade it is really sharp there's a real edge on it there's a top edge on it as well okay and then there's the spine of the blade so if this hits you this this will remove things this is a real one this is a blunt steel trainer so it's not sharp but obviously if it hits you it'll still shatter bone because it is a steel trainer and then for training, we typically use these rattan sticks. Rattan, it's not a wood. It's actually a vine. It's not a hard wood. Okay, and we use these because over time, they will they'll, uh, fray instead of like break like a hard wood. Okay? And these is what we use. So we can make contact. We can hit each other with it, right? And you're not using a, a real blade and cutting each other's hands off and stuff, right? You just hit them. You train with these. At Kali Center, in some schools, they use what's called a soft stick. So they'll use like a foam stick. We do not use those at Kali Center. This is our soft stick, and this is the real thing. So we only use rattan. It's very, very traditional training here at Kali Center. But with that said, in Kali, there's different areas of Kali that we teach. We go to the single sword, okay? And then we go into the double sword, fighting methods. So you're gonna learn how to use two. Then we also have the knife. We have the espadi adaga. So you're learning how to use one long and one short. We teach the double knife. We teach the single knife right there. We go into our empty hand fighting methods, okay? We have the long spear and the, and the staff and then the oar learning how to fight with those three. And uh, that can also represent any two-handed weapon, okay? Which is uh, the uh, the seventh area of Kali, all two-handed pole arms. Pole arms is the seventh area of Kali. Spears, staff, oars, anything, you know, a, a long sword with two that needs two hands to operate. Okay, then we also have flexible weapons. So we teach you how to use flexible weapons like a shirt. The traditional flexible weapons of Kali is a whip and a rope. All right, but you can learn anything. You learn the principles. Then we have throwing weapons. And we have projectile weapons. Right? So 
you actually do learn how to throw these as well, <laughs> okay? And you're learning the range of which you use each of these weapons, where to throw them. And then we have projectile weapons, like blow guns, slingshots. You know, nowadays we use firearms, right? I mean, I don't teach the firearms, but uh, you know, that, that would be included in the projectile. And, uh, and then you have uh, the healing and meditation arts of Kali as well, which is the 12th area. And then you also have shield. So we also teach how to use the shield as well. So it's a full fighting system. Kali is a full fighting system. Hey, CJ, you got to be patient with me. You can't just sit there and try to demand for me to answer your questions. You got to you got to slow down. I'm already answering one of your questions. Don't be rude. The style you look up is Okinawan. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good one. Savanandan, yeah, head over to uh, my channel after when I get off the live here in a few minutes and, uh, and go start checking out some of my videos so that way you can see some demos and stuff. We also have a second YouTube channel that's Kali Apex dash Kali Center Channel 2. And we have more of our flow stuff on there. So you'll see some sparring stuff on there. Nice, you started FMA from Kali Center. I like hearing that. <laughs> I got you with the thumbnail. Yeah, so on that thumbnail for this video, there's there's uh, there's the Ganunting, and it's my trainer Ganunting, and then I also have uh, one of the Spanish short swords on there as well. If you're wondering what those swords are. He started, Claudio says he started uh, a year ago and he's made a lot of progress. Where do you get your training weapons? Go to trigonalgear.com. This guy teaches more stuff than my teacher. <laughs> I'm looking forward to buying a bolo. I've been using a Japanese style bakken. That's good. Just always use what you got, and then, you know, you can always upgrade later. Nice. How many weapons do you have? Just the ones I need, my friend. Just the ones I need for training. Have you ever been in a movie? Nope. I do not have my sling with me or my blowgun with me. I did a little short blowgun kind of like little kind of fun video like last year but i'll be i'll be doing more of those videos i'll be doing more like yeah we got we got a ton of video ideas that we're going to be doing nice you subbed the kali apex awesome gotta watch your videos on pergola building got some new free space in the garden yeah, I'm going to be growing stuff all over here. So, yeah. Please make a video on Slingshot. Yeah, it's not much, guys. Like, it's not much. Like, it's it, it's going to be like a 30-second video with a whole bunch of fluff in there to make it 20 minutes. It isn't much. Yeah, use instead of switching from kickboxing to uh, to apex, jump into apex and just start doing that training along with your kickboxing. 
right? Because if you're enjoying kickboxing a lot, don't don't quit doing that just to do apex, right? I mean, unless you really want to, but do both at the same time. My mom loves plants. Yeah, dude, plants are awesome. I got a bunch of plants. All right, so uh, yeah, work those drills out. So we did a little bit of our single stick drills. We worked on those basic angles. I gave you a, a good progression of three different ways to train that. So that way you can uh, develop your strikes and all that stuff very well. And then we reviewed that heaven six drill. So that way you can really get those mechanics and get those strikes out there a lot better than how most people are kind of been teaching it. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like the telephone game, right? Like the intentions are always good, but you know, people will start to do things differently because you know, they don't, they don't know, they don't know, right? Like they're not learning how to actually use these movements. If you want to learn the actual tactical, the actual application of like heaven six and all that, you gotta jump into Kali Apex, my friend. You know, I don't, I don't give everything for free here on YouTube. I try to keep it basic on YouTube because I know we got a lot of people just starting off and all that. So, you know, I got to keep it pretty basic. And if you want to start diving deeper into your Kali, head over to KaliApex.com and uh, go check out our online school. You can train anywhere, anytime. We have a couple of different options. You can get access to our online school, which is all of our video lessons and all that. And uh, I've got a promo code right now where you can get access to my entire online school at half price. So it's $23 a month instead of the original $47 a month. And I'm, it's a year long uh, special. You don't have to commit to it to a whole year. You can unsubscribe anytime you want. But uh, you know, you can uh, just work that out. You know, you can get started with your training, $23 a month. You can work some of that some of the single stick, the double stick, the knife, the empty hands, the spotty adago. We got some of the staff and spear stuff up there. Um, you know, Cause you get access to everything, everything that we have. So go play around with that. Go check that out. Go to Kali Apex, KaliApex.com. And uh, go check that out. Go grab it for half price. I do have limited spots. There's a lot of spots available, but I do have them. I do have a number limit on that. And I don't want you to miss out on that. I want you to go over there and get access because it's a crazy, crazy good deal. And it's a lot of training. It's gonna, it'll definitely keep you busy for well over a year. Um, and then uh, I, we do have another method of training if you want, if you are interested. We do have our Apex coaching as well available that we host on our Patreon page where you can set up one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with the Kali Center team. And uh, you can actually get one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you can get all that coaching and you can get uh, all that stuff. And we have more exclusive training videos and all that stuff in there. But if you're looking for, you know, I just want to get the videos, I just want to train, then go and uh, go grab Kali Apex at half price. Man, this person really wants me to answer the question if I've ever had to use this stuff uh, for real with a knife. Um, I grew up in Chicago. I do not talk about my personal experiences, especially here on YouTube. I don't know who you are. So if you want to retract your uh, super chat, that is totally fine by me. I don't talk about my personal life on YouTube. So maybe one day you can come and train with me. We can develop a, a friendship and then I can answer your questions uh, more bluntly and, and uh, you know, more towards whatever it is that, that you're looking for. Um, but I do not answer those questions like that. I don't, I don't, no, I, I don't, I don't do that. I don't go into those discussions here on YouTube. All right. And, uh, yeah, so get out there, go train, go grab Kali Apex, get outside, go make nature your Kali Dojo. Does this work in the, well then just ask it like that. Just ask, hey, does Kali work in the streets? Yes, it does. 
but that doesn't mean it's going to work for you if you don't train it. If you don't train it with intention, if you don't train the logic of the system, if you're not training hard, if you're not training every single day, if you're not being meticulous about your development of your skills, then it will not be functional for you. Okay, so is it functional? Well, I don't know. The Philippine Force Recon Marines have been using it in war for a very long time now. And you tell me that, you know, sticking a stabbing a sharp metal object at somebody and going in them, is that functional? You got to you gotta use your intelligence here. But, uh, you know, weapons tend to work. Weapons tend to, you know, when you pick up a stick and you hit somebody with it, it, it tends to have a, it tends to have results, right? So here, here's Bob. Let me, let me, let me go ahead and uh, show you this real quick. Here's Bob. Let me fix this. I, I got a new tripod for my phone. This one's terrible. Here's Bob. Here's a stick. Pretend that this is your head and tell me what you think. Right across the jawline. Is that functional? If, I, if you got hit like that in, in a street fight, would that be effective? Would that knock some teeth out? Would that dislodge your jaw? Right? Here we are with a knife. <laughs> you got to do the training. Right? Nothing, nothing is going to be automatically functional. You have to go make it functional. You have to do the training. You have to put in the work. So what that means is, when, as soon as I get off of this live, go to Kali Center, go check out all of my different uh, videos here, find a video that interests you, learn that drill, go out and go practice that drill and go train that drill and start your training today. So that way you can start functionalizing Kali and make it functional for you. No martial art in the world is just functional, practical for the streets. You have to make it so for you, okay? Otherwise, it's just information. And it, it's useless if you're not putting it into practice. Weapons always work in the streets. That's why everyone afraid of them. Yep. This is the only channel that notices us. <laughs> well, a lot of live people don't, they don't interact with you guys. That's, I don't understand what the purpose of going live is then if they're not like hanging out with you guys. I enjoy your questions, you know, but it's like, it's always up for interpretation, right? So it's like, I have, to, I can only read them based on how I read them. So like if it ever comes across or if you ever feel like I'm kind of personally attacking you or anything like that, it's not actually like that. I'm just responding. And plus I got to keep this somewhat interesting, right? If I was always boring and monotone and being like, is Kali functional? Yes. If I don't give you some excitement, then you're not going to stick around. You're not going to want to keep training with me, right? I want training partners. I want to train. I teach so I can train. I don't teach so I can just keep teaching. I teach so I can train you. Hopefully, I get you really, really good, and then you and I can become training partners, and we can just start training together all the time. And then you'll come out to my ITC, which is my immersion training camp that I hold one time a year. Five days, total immersion training. All right, that's where I'm going next week. And uh, we train between 50 to 60 hours. It's 10 to 12 hours a day of training for five straight days. And uh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. So make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and I'm gonna do you guys another one. Hit the bell so that way you're notified. The reason why is because we're gonna be going live sometimes next week during our ITC, during my five day immersion training camp. So that way you can hang out with us live while we are training, doing all that intensive training and stuff. And maybe you'll catch some lessons. You'll get to meet a lot of the other uh, Kali Center people worldwide that come out and train. 
You get to see uh, all kinds of stuff. You get to see Kali in live action. You get to see us flow and spar and, and hit each other and <laughs> all that fun stuff. Uh, we won't be live the whole time because it's literally like 50 to 60 hours of training. Um, but we'll definitely be live a lot. So make sure that you are subscribed. Your notification bell is hit on. And that way you don't miss whenever we go live when we're all training together. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be so much fun. And then maybe maybe you guys will be able to join us next year at our ITC and train with us for five days. Because that, that would be a lot of fun to get more and more people training. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of skim through these last questions. And I'm going to jump out of here because I've been on here for like an hour and a half. And I'm going to jump out of here, get my workout in, and then... Uh, I got stuff to do today. <laughs> yeah, he would be. Bob's a trooper. <laughs> Bob's become a war veteran now. By now, look at him. Yep, he's my uh, he, that, that he's 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 my partner that that never quits, never leaves. He's all he's always ready to train. The drill a day helped me fix some errors that I've been that I've learned within the system I had learned previously seems functional to me. Yeah, drill a day, guys. That's another really good one to start with. What wins in knives versus stick? The one that's got best position. The one that's first, best position, and most. CJ says this is the best channel. His first... First experience here with Kali Center and already saying this is the best channel. I like that. The preacher ever, but I have to clean my peacemaker now. No one can stab me with them Kali movements. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it from the heart. Can't wait. Sounds fun. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining me today. I'm going to jet on out of here and get my uh, the rest of my workout in. i got to do everything else and, and all that. And I uh, found some old video of you on the heavy bag, and you can fly with your footwork. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That was an hour and a half. Felt like 20 minutes. That's how College Center is. That's why, that's why at ITC we end up training for like 10 to 12 hours a day. And everyone's like, that was 12 hours. It literally felt, it felt like 30 minutes. It felt like an hour. We're just training, man. We're just When you're just training, dude, it's just, that's what happens, right? Time does not become an importance or any relevance. It's timing that is relevant, right? So, all right, guys. Do me a quick favor. Train every single day. All right, commit to the training. And uh, if you have to rewatch this live once it's done, you know, and, and the replay is up, I'm going to go ahead and leave it up available for everybody for a while. Work these drills that I have earlier in this live. And then uh, head over to KaliApex.com and go grab access to my online school because I want you to take advantage of that half off. Okay. And uh, go try it out. Go check it out. It's going to change your game. It's a great, great place to train. It's a great resource for training. There is so many uh, videos up there that it will cover what you're looking for. If you're looking for a stick, sword, knife, empty hand, spear, staff, the whole gamut of Kali, you're going to find it over at my online school. Okay, We have more videos in our online school than we have here on YouTube. Okay, So go check that out, KaliApex.com. That's going to show you how to get in at half price. Okay. <clears throat> That's what's going to help you out. And uh, I will catch you guys back here next time for some more training, for some more Kali fun, and all that good stuff. All right. <clears throat>